come to chapel. We're glad that you're here. And uh, excited for what's going to happen today. Let's stand and sing a couple of tunes. <laughs>
wouldn't call it a stolen kiss, but maybe you would refer to it that way. I don't know. So, regardless of what kind of kiss it is, this imagery is just meant to tell us God loves us, and His love is unfailing, and He can love us unconditionally, which I think covers uh, every type of love. So today, what we're going to do, we're going to sing Unforeseen, just so we all see the same thing. But if you're the type of person that needs a sloppy wet kiss from God today, know He loves you that way. Here we go. So heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss My heart turns violently inside of my chest Lift up your face 
a wanderer come home. You're not too far. So lay down your head, lay down your heart, and come back as you are. Come back as you are. Come back as you are. Let's pray. Christ in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, 
because by works of the law no one will be justified. But if in our endeavor to be justified in Christ, we too were found to be sinners, is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. For if I rebuild what I tore down, I prove myself to be a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law so that I may live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, a verse you may have heard. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. Some of your Bibles say, well, then Christ died for nothing. Right? So there are three things I want you to see. First off, that our response matters because it reveals our understanding of the gospel. So the way we respond to Jesus reveals what we really think about it. In essence, if I just say, well, Jesus is Lord, or I just say his name, and I do whatever I want to do, what I'm revealing with my actions is that I don't really believe Jesus is who he said he is. I don't believe that he did what he said he would do. Right? Secondly, we are justified by Christ alone because he's the only one able. Now listen to this. Only Christ can change your life ultimately. Right? You know this and I know this. Right? There are things in our lives, be it sin, be it things we shouldn't do, be it sex, drinking, all those things that you've heard don't do. Right? Or if it's just... Um, I talk about people's backs or our gospel, whatever. We can't, on our own effort, fix those things for a little while, right? I can be a good kid for a little while, right? But eventually, my actions will reveal what's in my heart, right? Eventually, you will see the real Zach, right? Hang out with me long enough, you'll know that I'm a sinful person, right? I may fool you from the stage. I may be dressed like a pastor, right? But play softball with me long enough, and you'll understand I don't always act the right way, right? Um, that's why we all need Jesus, right? So verse 16, Paul says this. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith. And then in 21, he says, I did not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for nothing, right? So if I can do what I'm supposed to do on my own and I don't need anybody's help, then Christ went to the cross for no reason. But I can't do that. I just revealed to you that I can't do that. So therefore, Christ went to the cross for me and for you. Right? It changes the whole story. Right? There's a reason Christ went to the cross, and that's so that we would follow him. Right? And then if you look in verse 19 and 20, we live for Christ because he died for us. Verse 19 again. For through the law I died to the law so that I may live to God. I, live, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Here's what I want you to see. That's not bad. Don't freak out. Okay? Oh. <laughs> Here's what you see. The scripture says that I can be made right with God through Jesus. Right? And to be made right with God, it means I surrender my life to Jesus. It doesn't mean that I just pay lip service to the person that Jesus is. Right? I think for far too long you've heard the gospel like this. Hey, if you don't want to go to hell, say this prayer and you don't go to hell. What the Bible says is surrender your life to Jesus and he will take care of everything else. Right? What does it mean in my life to live for Christ? What does it mean that I've been crucified with Christ? Well, here, I want to show you real quick. Okay, so I know some people in the audience, I need your help. Taylor, come here. Corey, come here. Cruz, come here. Kristen, come here. Here's what I want to show you. Right? Uh, I need, like, a big... Yeah, come here. I need you. Yes, you. You, I need you. Um, hey, Dane, I need you to come back out here real fast. Come up here on the stage real quick. I want to show you something. I need you to be Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to redeem my skinny jean joke with Jesus. All right? So. All right. so I need you to be sports, and you to be hobbies, and you to be relationships, <laughs> and you can be your studies, and you get to pick family or work. Right. I'll pick that too. All right, so come up here real quick. Three little apples. Come up here on the stage. Right, so you get to stay over there for a second. All right, so our lives are made up of all these kinds of things, right? And if you're a college student, all these things exist in your life. So what you hear a lot of times is you're, in your life, you have to have the right priorities, right? You, you need to get your priorities in order. Get your priorities in order, right? Um, if you're at practice, your coach wants sports to be the priority. If you're in class, your teacher wants class to be the priority, right? All those things. I was a college athlete. I understand all that for sure. So here's what happens. So you try to get these in order. So of those, which one would you say is number one? Family? Sure? Yeah. Alright, so you would do that. So fam come up here, family. What's your name, family? David. David, thank you for playing my game, David. Alright, so which one would you say is next? Studies. 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 Uh, sports. <laughs> there are more sports than 
Just come here. So use that line, David. So you're using the line. Alright. Now which one's next? Study? Alright, come on, Cruz. I'm glad this is an honest crowd that you didn't put studies at the front because you'd have been lying to me. Alright, which one of these is next? Hobbies. Hobbies? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the boyfriend and girlfriend, they're dead. So here's what happens in a lot of our lives, right? So we spend a lot of our lives trying to keep these things in order, right? But what happens to us is these things beg for our attention at different times in our lives. And we get frustrated because we can't keep our priorities in order, right? When one thing should be the priority, something else jumps in front of it. And we frustrate ourselves trying to keep these in order. And what you hear a lot of times is, well, you need to trust Jesus and bring him into your life. And then what happens is Jesus becomes just another priority, right? So come over here, man. So most of the time, even as believers, you would say, Jesus should be the first priority in your life, right? You've heard that a lot. Well, what happens with that is sometimes my family drama drags me down, right? And then so Jesus gets moved back a space, right? And then sometimes I got girlfriend drama, which you know all about that, right? And then she, forget family, girlfriend drama comes in the front. I got to deal with girlfriend drama, right? And what happens is this. Our lives become very frustrated because we can't keep the priorities we know should be first, first. We frustrate ourselves, right? Let me show you the difference between what it means to actually surrender your life to Christ. What happens is, true surrender to Jesus is that I only have one priority, and he takes care of the rest. So it looks like this, right? It looks like, come here, Jesus, right? So Jesus is right here, and you'll be right here, and you'll be right here. Come over here, sports, right? Sports, come over here, studies, and come right here. Right, so here's, here's the more biblical picture of what it means to trust Jesus. It means that I put Jesus in the middle, it means that all my attention is focused on Jesus, and it means that Jesus dictates how I act in all of those situations. So now, it's not Zach Satter trying to figure out how I treat my wife. It's not Zach Satter trying to figure out how I treat my family. It's not me trying to figure out um, how I play softball, right? It's me loving Jesus and Jesus dictating how I live and act in all those situations. Does that make sense? Okay, give me a hand. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to close with this. There are a few things I want you to see from that passage of scripture, right? The first thing is this, is the gospel is the thing that changes you and changes your heart. On your own, you can never change your heart. I know there are a lot of you sitting in this room. I sat in a room like this at Oklahoma Baptist University every Wednesday for chapel, right? And I was an athlete, so I sat with the baseball players with our hats backwards in the back right corner. I get it. Um, and nothing in that, and I, the whole time I was sitting there, I would know that things were not right. I accepted Christ when I was seven years old. I've been following Jesus for a long time. But I would know that there were not things right in my life. And that God was saying, there's some things that I need you to work on. I struggled my entire college career trying to keep my priorities in order. Girlfriend, baseball, school, whatever. It wasn't until somebody named Matt Chandler said, there's only really one priority in your life. There's only one priority you should have in your life, and that's Jesus. And that's because Jesus is the only person that died for your eternal soul. He's the only person that loved you enough to die in your place, right? Scripture says that, that Jesus, that God sent Jesus because he loved us so much that he died for us, right? God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that in Christ we may have eternal life, we may have a relationship with him. The gospel is the thing that initially changes your heart, and secondly, the gospel is the thing that continues to change who you are. Right? There's this big word we use in church, it's called sanctification. Sanctification simply means you become more like Jesus day after day after day. And the amazing and beautiful part of that is, it's not you that does it, it's Jesus in you. It's Jesus that changes you day by day to be more like him. Right? Real quick story, I'm done. Dr. Palmer and I met, um, so we played on the same co-ed softball team, but before we did that, um, she was playing for our girls' church team, right? And I was coaching it, okay? If you don't know Dr. Palmer, she's Excited about the game of softball, to say the least, okay? Um, so they were playing a game, time was running out, right? And so she was flip flopping on the ground like she was hurt or whatever. She wasn't really hurt, she, she was like faking an injury, whatever, okay? Hey, if you wanna hear the real story, I'll tell you. Fake one, I'll talk about <laughs> So I'm yelling at her, I'm like, I'm like, get up, Elon, we gotta go, we gotta go, hurry. And she's like, shut up, Zach! Shut up, Zach! So that's our first interaction, 
pastor to church member is that interaction, right? <laughs> All that to say, that relationship has come a long ways, but so is my relationship with Jesus, because he changes my heart. In my life, in the way I approach other people, but in the way I approach him. So if you've trusted Jesus, awesome. Continue to follow him. If you haven't trusted Jesus, let him make a difference in your life. Let him show you what it means to have a life fully surrendered and take care of all those other things that the world will throw at you. Let me pray for you guys. God, we thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for scripture. God, we thank you that, um, that you loved us enough and you cared for us enough to make a way to be in a right relationship with you. God, I pray that we would understand what Jesus did for us. I pray that we would understand how he can change our lives. God, I pray that we would understand uh, what it means to really follow him. God, I thank you for all the college students in this room. God, I thank you that you created them. I thank you that you brought them here to Hobbs, New Mexico. What a crazy thing. God, I pray that you would just continue to work in their life. God, I pray for safety in their sports. I pray that you would allow them to play well. God, I pray that you would allow them to play to the best of their ability. God, but I pray more than anything else that, that you would bring them to a place where they understand what it means to know you and to follow and to serve you. That place in Jesus' holy and awesome name. Amen. <laughs> so that you can get to know Jesus. And we love to hear what's going on in your life and your relationship with Jesus already. Uh, you saw the announcements in the video. Tomorrow's a big day for us here on campus. Let's put on our best smiles and happy faces and have a good time. And then also, I wanted to add again, how many of you know what FCA is? Okay, that's why I'm gonna say it again. FCA stands for Fellowship of Christian Athletes. What it is, is a basically it's a Bible study on campus. It's time to just come hang out. You don't have to be a Christian and you don't have to be an athlete to be there. So 
For those of you wondering what that was every single week that I kind of mentioned it, we kind of mentioned it, that's what it is. We meet on Monday nights here in the theater in the room back there. And it's, we have food, fun, games, and a Bible study. It's, it's a lot of good times. And there's people that have been coming each week and they want other people to join them because it's so much fun they want to share it with you. So if you're free on Monday nights at seven or if you have class till like 7.20 or so, come on over after class, have a good time. Um, that should conclude all of our announcements. We love you, so glad that you're here. Hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you tomorrow.